Stan Delaplane, I write a newspaper column just about everywhere in the world, and I guess the only place in the world I haven't been is Alaska. I don't know much about it. My grandfather used to recite the service poem, The Shooting of Dan McGrew, and he recited it with emotion and a great deal of feeling. And I think that's the way I always thought of Alaska, the miner fresh from the creek, dog dirty and loaded for bear. So I'm off with my 12-year-old daughter to this land of the midnight sun. And while the sun is up, both day and night, I'll be down here in the cabin writing a column. What else? Arcadia and Spirit of London. P&O has two ships cruising up to Alaska this year. And for the first few days out, it's warm and it's sunny and not at all what I expected. Actually, I didn't know what to pack on this kind of a trip. I threw in a pair of swim trunks and a raincoat and figured that covered it. Victoria is an absolutely charming, well-preserved little old lady of a city, enjoying its dowager days with one hell of a lot of dignity. It's an outpost of the British Empire, really. The retired British came here for the genteel approach to life and the best climate in Canada. Your maiden aunt adores it, and the young people are turned on by the great natural beauty. civilization and going into the inside passage. Uh, we picked up a Canadian pilot to take us through, and we're into a country of pine trees and uh, tall mountains and Indian villages, country of salmon, and lumber, and I guess it's the last frontier. This was the passage that the miners took in 1898 after they outfitted on the wharves in San Francisco and Seattle and came up here with picks and pans and all kinds of crazy equipment that they bought. They came up here with one thing in their hearts and that was to find eternal wealth. A lot of them found it, a lot of them didn't. of London is now at Ketchikan. 10,000 people, it's the third largest city in Alaska. As you can see, it rains a good deal here, but we've got the umbrella and you can see the rain gauge. It rains 151 inches a year and sometimes gets up to 202. If you come here on a sunny day, the people here are a little apologetic because they think it should rain for you. But believe me, they don't have to apologize very often. Just outside of Ketchikan is probably the best place in Alaska to see totem poles. Now, these poles are carved from cedar logs, 
and nobody really knows what they mean except the clans who carved them. Up and down like this, sailing the ocean, bumping up and down like this. They could build their ships, my lads. Here we go, ladies, gents, ladies, but you can't beat the boys of the old brigade. Bumping up and down like, bumping up and down like, bumping up and down like this. Sit down, honestly, you're open, it's all good. If we need an engine manoeuvre, we push the buttons here. This is repeated down in the below in the control room, and they do the manoeuvring from down there. Now, you've probably seen in the movies people like Gregory Peck hanging on like grim death with these little levers going like that, <laughs> and ringing down the cheek and saying, Give her more speed. This is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that instead of having a handle, we've got push buttons. Stop port, stop port, stop port. flying over 1,500 square miles of ice fields. Flying's about the way everybody gets around up here. If you want your groceries delivered, the, the some charter pilot will fly them into you. And one in every 40 Alaskans has a private pilot's license. In fact, you see more airplanes here than I've ever seen anywhere else. They're tied up like yachts in the uh, harbors. Uh, these people they call bush pilots are flying with navigational instruments. So I'm not as worried as I would have been in the 20s or 30s when they were flying by the seat of their pants. Robert Benchley once said that traveling with children is like riding third class on a Bulgarian railroad. It's a little different here on the Arcadia. At eight o'clock in the morning, you can turn your children and everybody else's children over to an English nanny in the playroom, and from there on in, it's Mother's Day off. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming up this morning. Well, the first thing I'm going to do now is to introduce myself to you all. I'm the manager of the Stein and Sound that you have here on board. And Christopher here is one of my stylists that I brought up this morning do this demonstration. This here is a perfect example of European styling. It's soft, it's casual, it has the cut without coming to setting. There's no setting in this rig at all. There's a miniature shopping bazaar on all of these ships, and it's probably the only place you'll find that you're going to get this kind of bargain, duty-free, on the West Coast. The next number is 296. This is just one number above the captains. One number above the captains, 
296. The captain's choice is 295. Ladies and gentlemen, opening bids, please. Don't forget the wind is right behind us here. Five dollars at the back there. We have 50 cents from this young man at the front. The mileage auction starts at 11 o'clock in the morning, and it's a very simple gambling game. You're going to bet on how far that ship ran in 24 hours. And to start with, you've got the captain's estimate. You can bid for all kinds of numbers on this, close to the captain's estimate. And the closer you get, of course, the higher the bidding goes, and sometimes the bidding gets very frantic. $36 in going once. $37 on my right, ladies and gentlemen. $37 one. Who's going to make it around $40? $40. $40 we have, ladies and gentlemen. $40 bid right here. $40. Any more bids after $40, ladies and gentlemen? $40. Any of us on $40? $40 then going once. $40 twice. Sold to you, sir, for $40. Give a nice round of applause. The highest bid so far this morning. But I did forget to tell you that the tide has been against us. <laughs> This is the end of the day. The sun's going down in a shower of gold and the wake is foaming up behind you. And if romance is ever going to get to you, it's going to get to you right now. That's why I'll always be your boy. You are the apple of my eye. Forever. Most of shipboard friendships are made at dinner. And after a few nights, you know everybody at your table, and by this time, you probably know the names of their children, too. It's a dressy time of evening, as much as you want to make it. I'm sure every woman says sometime, if I could only go out to dinner every night for a couple of weeks, that would be heaven on earth. Well, shipboard's the place for it. This is the dinner hour at sea. Evening has begun. On the bridge, the radar eye is sweeping the dark sea. Stuart, bring on the caviar and pour the wine. And if I This area here where we are today, which is Glacier Bay, is, is a fantastic experience for me. And where we are exactly at the moment, one of, about 150 years ago, was covered with ice. Now, this glacier is 65 miles long, which isn't particularly long in any stretch of water. But to think that when George Vancouver came here in 1790-odd, this was just an absolute solid wall of ice. And where we're steaming right now was nothing but glacier ice and it's receded um, approximately about 60 miles. We, we'll go right to the end of this glacier and then stop the ship virtually against this um, wall and just you can just stand and stare up at it. This is an in absolutely incredible experience. This particular area. This is, it's very hard to describe, as though you've just stepped back into history. Um, it's like imagining what the Northern Hemisphere was like 15,000 years ago. Uh, it's, and one tends to pay some form of reverence to it by speaking in harsh tones, certainly when you first go out on deck.
It's a good day for Irish coffee, too. If you can juggle a glass and load your camera at the same time, you've got it made. This is where Eastman Kodak film is sold by the yard, I guess. I'm surprised they haven't bought Glacier Bay. It looks like a whaling expedition, but it isn't. The ship's boat is going out to get glacier ice. They'll never run out of party ice here. I don't know whether it makes the champagne colder, but it's certainly something to tell your friends at home. The champagne's been chilled in ice from the glacier. It's over 10,000 years old. Did you hear that? General Electric must have been freezing ice up here 10,000 years ago. <laughs> you know, you're right. Good afternoon, Mr. Dillapain. You don't mind champagne for lunch, then, sir? It's great. Great year for wine. Must have been a great year for ice. No, I think it must have been, sir. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The Russians came here first. Not for gold, they came for furs. Sitka was big town ringside, the capital of Russian America, and they say it was some town, formal dress for dinner on the wild frontier. The ship anchors offshore and everybody goes in on launches. It's crisp weather up here and there's a smell of salt water and pine needles in the air. The fur business finally went bust more than 100 years ago, and the Tsar was happy to sell all Alaska to us for $7 million. And most people in America thought we'd been had. The town turned out for a fresh salmon bake and Russian dancing. The local girls do it. It seems they'd like to keep the Russian tradition as it was in the fur days, and I guess every child in town learns that boot-kicking dance. Warning, a word of the wise should be sufficient. All con men, bunco and sure thing men, and all other objectionable characters are notified to leave Skagway and the White Pass Road immediately and remain away. That was a notice put up by Frank Reed and his vigilante committee on the main street here in Skagway, Alaska in 1898. Soapy Smith was buried here too. He came up here from uh, Colorado in the gold rush and he came up with five men with uh, some wonderful names like the Moonfaced Kid and uh, Doc Bags and uh, Reverend Charlie Bowers and uh, Yank Fuclos. He came up here with five men. He wound up with 300 men, all sorts of rascals working for him, from gunmen down to card sharks, until he ran into Frank Reed on the dock one day and they killed each other. And now they're buried out here in this lonely cemetery. Some of the gravestones have been chipped away by tourists over Soapy Smith's grave. And there's even one Chinese tombstone over there, which I can't find out exactly what it means, even though I've asked the city manager, and he doesn't know. But I think it means reporters who don't get first names don't work long on newspapers. Skagway today is a quiet little town of 750 people except when a P&O cruise ship comes in and then the population doubles. Most people take the six hour train ride over White Pass to Lake Bennett and you'd better book it early. There are only 360 seats. This was the Prospector Trail in the Gold Rush of 98, and they did it on foot.
that's fine. Now, now wait a minute. Uh, yeah. I Eating never ship stops there. on shipboard, and this is the fifth now, meal of the day, the midnight the, uh, buffet. Uh, Tonight they're making yeah, pictures. So Everybody get wants to get into right show there. business. Okay. Hey, that's good. Now, just bend it down a little bit. Beautiful. Now, I want the other two chefs to be beautiful. Pick them up. Yeah. And lean them over a little bit. That's good. I want all you guys to look at me at one time. All right. Good. All right. Now, smile. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's terrific. Howard Hughes came to Vancouver to find whatever Howard Hughes was looking for. Paid $6,000 a month for his rooms at the Bay Shore Inn. This city is part modern high-rise and part old town. Gastown used to be a raunchy player piano honky-tonk. Today it gives a touch of nostalgia that young people and the old really dig. There's also something no man in his right mind would do, but you've got to be a hero to your children. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gross Mountain. We have just left the village station at an elevation of 935 feet above sea level, and we'll be rising to an elevation of 3,700 feet. That's just a little over half a mile. Our vertical rise is one mile, and we are riding at nine miles an hour. We should reach the top in about seven minutes. If you look out the front window here to my left, you'll see the two cables. The top thick one is the track, and it is stationary. The bottom one is the hauling cable, and it pulls the two cars up and down the mountain. So we're somewhat like two things on a clothesline. And when you look at the front window once again, you see the residential area on the hill. That's called the municipality of West Vancouver, and it's known for its beautiful homes and gardens. To the left of that, you see the Lionsgate Suspension Bridge, and it crosses over the Vancouver Harbor, which has 96 miles of shoreline. It seems to disappear into a wooded area that's called Stanley Park. It has 1,000 acres. Two-thirds of it is left in its natural state, and the other one-third is made into picnic areas, beaches. There's a fine aquarium and zoo also. And if you have any questions, I'll be pleased to answer them for you. time you have to get off of these cruise ships or else they'll throw you off. Or if you want to, you can stand here on the dock and uh, throw streamers at the people who are going. What did I get out of Alaska? Well, if you like the figures, I find out that it's bigger than Texas and has fewer people than Wichita, Kansas. Actually, cruising's are probably the best way to see Alaska. And I'm sure it's much better than they did it in 1898 in the gold rush by dog sled. And I found out that if you have a 12-year-old daughter, she'll go on swimming every day, even in Glacier Bay, and when the weather outside is something I wouldn't throw a polar bear into. And I got 14 columns, and that's what I came for. 